Welcome back to Freeman. Now, here's the thing. This is actually post-commentary, mainly because I had my voice file recording be corrupted, and so we're gonna just go with the post-commentary, because this is actually a very important episode, and a lot actually happened, but unfortunately, as I said, my original commentary was lost. Anyway, as you can see right here, I've actually done a pretty significant deal of recalibrating with our squads and everything. I have seven in every single squad, and uh, even though I am not maxing out my party size, I think we have a pretty decent shot at being able to take the nearby town of Lipno. I've also retrieved Yevgen from his uh, duties of patrolling around, and hopefully Igor is going to be a little bit more on the uh, on the lookout for enemies and things like that. I think Igor might be a little bit bugged because when I'm looking at him, he still only has one out of 120, even though he does have a few points in financial and in tactics. So not entirely sure what's going on there. But otherwise, what I've done with my squads is I have kind of changed their composition a little bit. Basically, I've made them much better at long range combat by introducing a sniper unit into each of them. So every single squad, with the exception of maybe two, I think, has a long range option. And that could be a militia sniper or a trained marksman or something along those lines. And they are the guys that are gonna be doing the long range damage. Obviously our Spetsnaz guys, they do have rifles, but their sight range is not as good as you would need it to be. Otherwise, I am also fielding a bunch of lower level recruits. Now these lower level recruits are obviously going to be uh, maybe a bit of a liability in the Arctic squad, but they're going to level up really, really fast, and I think that's going to be quite good. As you can see here, we do have a whole bunch of trained infantry as well. Those guys are going to be very, very important for us. I've actually started to phase out the Spetsnaz, but I'm going to be doing something pretty important in the next episode, probably, with a Spetsnaz squad, because obviously they are very good with shotguns, and that kind of brings me to the point where I might... I think someone actually suggested this in the comments anyway... But what I might actually try to do here is I might try to make a Spetsnaz squad that is entirely comprised of those guys with shotguns and just have them charge in all over the place and see how that goes, see whether that's effective or not. It might very well not be effective because of what is about to befall the, the uh, poor souls of the Reformian Rebellion. You'll see as we go forward in this episode. Otherwise, I have actually been declared war on by the Atoll Federation, and uh, I actually got that guy. I actually captured that guy. He only had one unit in his army, and I thought to myself, oh yeah, that's, that's my guy. I'm going to be taken in prisoner. Unfortunately, I still do not have enough persuasion attempts to be able to do that. So, as you can see, we're actually moving in here, and what I'm trying to do, my main goal in these sieges going forward, because most of the enemies are very, very difficult, is to take flags. That's that's it, just taking flags. So as you can see here, I'm actually making it so that my units will go over and around to the various flags so they can capture one, and maybe I can then capture one, and then maybe we can work together to try and capture the last one. Now, here's the thing. I'm very afraid of... Usually, you know, usually units in Freeman do not give me that sense of dread because I think to myself, oh, you know, it's, it's just a regular unit. It's going to do some damage to me, but it's not really going to... Mm, it's not really going to kill me that quickly. <laughs> oh, how wrong I was. How wrong. Yes. Mm. You will see in this episode, I'm a bit scared of these federal sharpshooters. These federal sharpshooters are really harsh. They are really, really harsh, and you'll see exactly what's going on there in just a second. As you can see, where there's a whole bunch of enemies in the distance, and those guys are actually fine. I don't have to worry about those guys, and uh, we're going to start moving a couple of people into the second flag, because we've already captured one. It's pretty fantastic, pretty good progression for us right there. And then I will try, if I can, to sneak around to the left kind of try and hide behind a building, maybe try and get that third flag. But obviously, 
We've got to get by these guys first. We've got to get by those federal sharpshooters and the various other units that we have ahead of us here. Now, unfortunately, I, from long range, are able, I'm, I'm able to hit a couple of people. You know, I can hit a couple of people. But the federal sharpshooters are so good that they can do so much damage to you from a massive, massive way away. And we're actually starting to see damage. Look at that. Look at that damage. That's just insane damage from that federal sharpshooter. And you can already see here that the, the, the amount of casualties that we're receiving from those sharpshooters is just enormous. It really is. And we've just skipped a little bit ahead in the battle here because we were pinned down by sharpshooters for quite some time until we kind of flanked around a little bit with these two squads. And we're hopefully going to be able to do a bit of flanking action ourselves. But... Yeah, again, it's because we are kind of not outnumbered, so to speak, but it's because these federal sharpshooters are so incredibly good. But they do give a huge amount of experience. 385 or uh, something along those lines experience. And that is crazy. That's really, really crazy. And let me tell you something. The federal special forces units, they give you even more experience. They give you like 450 or something like that. So if you ever go uh, go go to war against the Atoll Federation, well, you probably want to try and kill those sharpshooters as soon as possible. <laughs> they are insane units. Really, really effective. And that makes me think, I'd like to get some of those. Not entirely sure where to get them. So I'm going to try and find them before the next episode and maybe we'll, we'll equip a, a, a whole squad full of those guys and uh, then we'll see what, what happens. But yeah, it's, it's going to be harsh. It's going to be harsh. So yeah, we're, tr we're trying to flanking action here. I've I summoned another group to come in from our reserves, from, from our reinforcements to try and reinforce some of our people behind us. And the main problem is, is that we're pinned down here. We kind of need to move forward. But unfortunately, I don't think that that's going to be possible because of these sharpshooters. They really just have everything pinned down. They can see you from such a far distance, and they do so much damage. Unfortunately, I don't have any more medkits either. So that is obviously going to be a big problem. And I'm moving this squad over here and another squad over to our other contingent of units on the other side of the map to try and support them in that area. Now, unfortunately, yeah, there's a death. Yes, unfortunately, I do get taken out there. But that's okay, because we can head straight back on in uh, after a little bit of restoration, so to speak, because I actually had to retreat all the way back to Gorinka. But, and you're about to see exactly why, yeah. Exactly why the Federal Sharpshooters instill that fear into you, because they can get you from just out of nowhere and you don't even know that it's happening it's just out of nowhere boom and they take you out and this is when we have engaged the opponent once again this is a, another attempt at attempting to take a lipno and you can see here i've actually got a really nice vantage point because all of the federal special forces and the sharpshooters and things like that they are all up on that hill there and i'm kind of i'm kind of in, in pretty decent cover here because they can basically only shoot me through a well relatively large window but it is still okay. I think it's a pretty decent place to be in, and uh, hopefully I will then survive a little bit better than I did last time. Now we're moving up here, trying to get to that flag. I'm trying to get to that second flag over there, because I think personally, this is probably the best way that anyone has of being able to take a town from an enemy, uh, an enemy faction that is actually as powerful as the Atoll Federation. So, for example, because these guys have so many sharpshooters, because they have so many special forces, it's a good idea to try and take these flags. As you can see, I'm actually prone behind these sandbags right next to a flag, capturing it. And we now have two flags out of the possible three that we need to succeed. Now, I'm actually wondering if there are more items in the future of Freeman being implemented that are going to give you even more camouflage rating. I'm wondering whether that's going to be a, uh, a way to do things, because this is very stealthy, it's very sneaky. And if this was at night, I think I might even have a better shot at getting to these flags. So there's a little bit of strategy to incorporate as well. So there you go, we've raised the third flag and we conquered it, just literally from raising that flag. And we didn't have to eliminate the last remaining units. If I had been able to do that... At an earlier time, I would have saved my squads so much pain and so much agony because we actually did lose 
about 13, 15 or so units in that particular siege attempt. And we're going to just try and loot a whole bunch of things here so that maybe some of our newer recruits can replace them and get slightly better gear. And the level ups, the level ups are crazy, yeah, of course, because we did gain about 2,900 experience right there. And obviously I do have quite a few new well, new recruits, basically. New volunteers to join us, and even the uh, slightly older ones, these Spetsnaz guys, for example. Those guys are going to be leveling up pretty significantly. What's really cool, though, that I found is that when you click on the auto-equip and the border turns gold on a particular unit of their portrait, that tells you that that guy has received a new item. I think that's really awesome. There's Yevgen getting a little bit of an upgrade there as well, a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of level ups and we're going to actually spec him into some more financial and maybe a little bit more in tactics as well. And then obviously we do have, yeah, so Igor, I don't know what he's doing. I, I'm, I have no idea what he's doing. He, I, I think I made a mistake on him, to be honest. I think I really did not spec him correctly. I actually forgot the units cap out at level 10. I think maybe companions might, might do well to actually get a slightly higher max level cap, so maybe level 15 or something like that, but I guess it's just because I uh, I didn't spec him entirely appropriately. I really should have spec'd him into about six in leadership, maybe six in tactics, or maybe six in financial, if you can actually do that, or maybe something along those lines, maybe a little bit more even. You know, if you're gonna create like a, you know, combat companion or a combat general, for you, then it's probably a good idea to kind of even it out a little bit instead of just going for a huge amount of leadership. I thought that initially that would be great, but turns out it's not so great. Anyway, we're going to be getting a sniper school there, I believe, and uh, that is obviously going to help us to get more trained marksmen and things like that. And look at who, look, look at who we have here. We have a new companion, and uh, his name is Ivan, and he will be joining us for 8,000 credits, which is really cheap. That's fine fine with me no problem at all and this guy is uh, well he's going to level up pretty quickly I think and we'll try and see what we can do now here's the thing where should we go next because we've taken Lipno now and I was initially thinking hey well, maybe we should try and take you know Chinivka from the Valkyrie female fighters but then I thought well they've actually got a pretty good relation with us at the moment so there's basically no point in me doing that they've seen they seemingly been very friendly to us and not really been that adversarial or aggressive in any way not like the Atov Federation that is and I'm thinking oh maybe we should take Zashkiv maybe we should take Zoria or one of those because obviously that's along our border and that kind of makes sense but yeah, then you got to think about those federal sharpshooters. It is just crazy. So these guys have leveled up once again because I actually did do a little bit of extra fighting here and there to eliminate some of the bandit camps in the area. And also we did get attacked by some desert bandits attempting to take Lipno. But thankfully they, they leveled up uh, from the experience there. And uh, as you can see, uh, Igor is... Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure what I'm, I'm going to be doing with him, to be honest. But hopefully he will come and try to defend Lipno for us. And we'll see how he does there. Now, I did initially think that it might be a good idea to attack the Chinivkan Front Rebellion. These guys, I have picked on them every single time I've created a new playthrough in Freeman due to, you know, save game incompatibilities and things like that because they usually don't have the best of units and, and you can see here that we're actually taking a look at their stats and they don't have great stats, you know, they have decent stats, you know, I'm not saying that they're awful or anything, but the grand scheme of things, they're not really, they're not really great, not like the Federal Machine Gunners, for example, those guys are just crazy good, they got a hundred in machine guns, whereas these guys, they don't have a hundred in that much, I mean, this guy has a hundred in throwing, obviously, because he's a grenadier, but you, you see what I mean, anyway, that will be it for this episode, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.